In fact, on the broadcast on TNT, Stan Van Gundy took it a step further than that. Give this a listen. Minnesota's top-rated defense is going to be challenged trying to slow them down. Arguably the best offensive backcourt in the history of the NBA in Luka Doncic Whoa. and Kyrie. Listen to the reaction of Reggie Miller. He knew exactly what that was. Again, I have a theory as I present my green list this morning. I think Stan Van Gundy was just thinking to himself, you know, Greeny and Stephen A. need something to talk about tomorrow morning. Why don't I say that? <laughs> and so, uh, Stan, thank you very much. So without further ado, today I present for you the top five offensive backcourts since the merger in the NBA. We cut it off there, so this will not include Jerry West and Gail Goodrich. It will not include Bob Cousy and Sam Jones. This is in the more modern era of the NBA. Here we go at number five, James Harden and CP3. All they didn't do was win. They played two seasons together in Houston. They won three playoff series. Candidly, if CP3 doesn't get hurt, maybe they knock out that Golden State team that looked unbeatable, but they combined to average 51 points and 16 assists in the playoffs when they played together. At number four, let's go back to Magic Johnson and Byron Scott. They played eight seasons together in L.A. They won three championships, made six finals. They combined to average 37 points and 15 assists when playing together. Cooper got more attention than Byron Scott. Cooper more a defensive specialist. Scott more the offensive player. At number three, Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars. They played nine seasons together in Detroit. They made three straight NBA Finals. They won two championships. They combined to average 36 points and 14 assists. At number two, Stan, I'll put Luka and Kyrie. And let's see, with more time and a championship, maybe this will change. Right now in their second season together, they're three wins away from an NBA final. They're averaging 50 points and 14 assists this postseason. So who's number one? It's the Splash Brothers. 11 seasons together in Golden State. They've won four championships. They combine to average 46 points, nine assists, and seven threes per game. They are certainly the most accomplished historically of these backcourts, and I'll put them at number one. So the list is there for you guys to react to. You see my list there of the top five. Jay, why were you looking funny? Why did you, what is how, that look how, on your face? How, what could you possibly how, disagree with? How could we put Luka and Kyrie as number two when they haven't won anything yet? The, the question what have is, they won? are they the best offensive backcourt since the merger? The only one better than them, definitively better than them, is the Splash Brothers. They're not the most accomplished. They just teamed uh, up together. Okay. But they are doing historically great things. Offensively skilled, okay. I mean, with the punch. But, like, my thing is offense also needs to translate to winning at a high level. So, well, this is new. I, I, they're I'm three just not wins away from the finals right now. Let's okay, see what I'm just happens. not going to diminish Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm putting all respect. That's I'm not where putting I was going. Kyrie I think they need to above be the medal. Yeah, I they, can't they, do they, that. They, they, oh, Joe Dumars and Isaiah Thomas, I I think need to be number two because back-to-back -back championships for, you know, again, a backcourt like that, and they were the engine of that team offensively. Isaiah, if you're watching, no one disagrees with any of that. What I am saying is... <laughs> you that, disagree with that! No, I'm not disagreeing with their accomplishment. What I'm saying is... Luka Doncic, if you look at the numbers, is literally controls the game offensively in ways that no one in the history of the sport has. And when you add Kyrie Irving, who gave you the offensive punch he gave you the other night, inside and outside, the finishing ability, the ability to be the 1A when Luka needs him to, 24 in the first half for Kyrie, 15 in the fourth quarter for Luka. That's an unbelievable combination. No. Are they historically as great a tandem right now? No, of course not. What I'm saying is, Purely going with offensively. I'm just I'm production. literally addressing exactly what Stan wow. said. Can we push back on the idea that there are more possessions in today's game than Isaiah? If Isaiah and Joe Dumars at, at their peak were playing in this the system that they play now, the offense that they play now, the possessions and the style and all that stuff, they would have been prolific as a scoring backcourt. There's no question about it. So that. much has changed in one year. I mean, last year was a horrible backcourt. It's not going to work, and now it's the greatest backcourt. <laughs> <Is> there <laughs> everlasting I credit? Can't, I, I can't. McNutt, I can't. get in here. McNutt, I, I, I can't read that face. What is it? Well, I, I really like the Liz Greeny, but by your own precedent, I'm kind of with the guys in terms of championships matter, right? And I get it. Luka and Kyrie are just getting going. The offensive numbers, we can get into the weeds on that. 
But my first thought was like, don't you have to move them down just based on the company that you're putting them in? That was my only first thought. But other than that, I really love those duos. Well, all of them have championships. I mean, Magic and, and Byron Scott won three Correct. championships together. Uh, Chris Paul and, and, and James Harden did not, of course, as we <laughs> mentioned in there. So they're, they're all, all of the, all the other ones on the list are champions. You can't, that, that, that couldn't be the only criteria because, again, Stan didn't say they're the best backcourt since the merger or whatever it is. The, the pure offensive numbers would support it. Go ahead, Winman. Yeah, it's, it's worth keeping an eye on, for sure. They've got to do more, but, I mean, it's not an unreasonable statement. Uh, I will say this. Like, um, LeBron plays offensive guard. Yeah. Does LeBron get considered the backcourt? He, he, you know, look, he and Kyrie were pretty darn good. They won a title together for those three years. They were pretty dynamic offensively. It's not a backcourt, but I don't know how that qualifies. <laughs> but I would certainly say, you know, Kyrie, Kyrie's best running mate to this point has been LeBron. Let's see if Luka can displace that. That's what I'm looking at. We considered that yesterday. We actually ran through, should Tatum and Brown be considered that? I mean, I think the classical definition of a backcourt, LeBron James doesn't meet. Do I think he's generally the best point guard that ever lived? I actually do. But when you write his history, he's going to have a three next to his position, not a one or a two. Right? Why would he have a three? Isn't he a small forward? Isn't that what he is? No, he's a point guard. He's a point forward. All right, well, if you're going to make him the point guard, then he and Kyrie. But but, new point guard. Jeez, Jay. What? It's a new point guard. It's the same thing. I think you need to use the windy air quotes yeah. when you're I saying mean, point, point forward. forward. Okay. I agree. I think that's very important I mean, to you know, also use that. And parenthetically, we decided not to go with Michael Jordan <laughs> and anyone, you know, you know, kind of thing like Michael and Ron Harper. By the time Harper was there with him, his numbers had fallen Max off and Curry, significantly, yeah, exactly. all those sorts of things. No, this is the right list. Hodges I enjoy the, the argument and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, as we all understand, I'm right. <laughs> 